Many of you will notice that there will be a bird that will hang around you specifically or be there just for you. There will be a sign from the animal kingdom about the changes in the energies. Some of you will experience, I would leave mostly birds because it is a higher element, a higher flying being will make you think of God and heaven and spirituality, but they are here for you to let you know that the changes are coming and they are good. We are from the avian, you call us blue avian, people. Welcome. We wish to bring you information. Many of you know much about us at this point due to a few people that are channeling us around the world. But now we are here to bring a greater message about the powers to be. There is a grand scheme to all things. And although we have closed off the solar system and not letting anyone in or out for this moment because... We do not want to disturb the energy that is coming through at this time. So less movement in the solar system is better. We want the energies to come through in a pure, much wonderful way, more wonderful way. We want them to be effective because Mother Earth is changing. Now many of you have heard that she is going away. She is going away in only one aspect, but she's coming back in in another. And that is also why some people see two worlds. Because one world is of one energy and one world is another. Another kind of basic energy. This will be, there are many interpretations and symbols to what is happening with Mother Earth and the people that are on it. So therefore, do not be taken back that some of these things are literal. Because they are symbolic of what is happening on the Earth. I will be more literal in telling you that the energies that are here and the energies that are to take control completely will be of a more magical and wonderful nature. More people will open up to the fourth dimension and others will close down. Why? Because they cannot accept intellectually what is happening. Not that they cannot feel it but they cannot accept it intellectually, meaning that their mind is closed to thoughts of magic being real. It is not really magic. It's as part of science as well, but it appears to be like magic in some ways. Do you understand that? We are here to bring that energy in of greater health, a greater understanding of who you are in your own body, this energy is helpful if you use it to be helpful. If you use it in a positive way, it will be positive. And if you use it in a negative way, it will be negative. Of course, it is all in the intent. And there will be some that intend to use it negative, negatively because it is strong. It is of a great, powerful nature. And therefore, they will try to use it against others to make themselves look better or gain fortune or fame or whatever it is that they are desiring. But you are protected if you so desire. Let me explain. If you fall into their deception willingly, there is nothing you can do but go along with it. But if you protect yourself beforehand and know that when you meet them, you will be able to perceive the deception, then you will not fall into it and will be questioning it and know that it is not something that resonates with you. This is a time of great resonation within yourself. You must start to trust your instincts. You must start to trust your decisions. You must start to make solid decisions because this is a time of decisiveness. You are either for us 
or against us in many ways because the gray area doesn't work. There's no energy or power in it. Do you understand that? In a gray area in this age, there is no power and you're just drifting. But there is power in the negative sources and in the positive sources. So please join us in the positive. Please join our energies together in the positive, which m you already are. But I am just letting you know as a fact how it is going to work. You are all connected together in your ascension process. You are all connected together in your soul connections. You are all connected together in light and in the Spirit of God with the many different facets of understanding of Him as you have. And bring those all together and it makes a much greater picture of who He is. Do not put someone down for their aspect or perception of God because how do you know that it's wrong? God is huge and intense and uh, eternal. And so if they have even one small vision or aspect of God within them, feed it. Do not shut it down and say that it is not the same aspect as yours. It's just a smaller view, perhaps. It may be just a smaller facet. But anything that connects spirit to the mankind is a beautiful thing. So feed all those connections, even though they may not be the connection that you may desire. You have a greater and more wonderful understanding of who God is. But why correct or try to change someone's perception when they are not ready for it? So accept their view of spirituality, no matter how small it is, because it connects them to the spirit world. It brings them an idea of who God is. And if you are an example, that perception will grow and grow and become part of who you are and a, a greater perception of God. Do you understand that? We talk spirituality a lot in this realm here because it is important. It is important to be who you are. It is important to accept others. It is important to accept yourself. It is important to avoid negativity and bring all those things to you in a positive way. Because you can bring anything to yourself in a positive way. And what does that do? That is an example to the world of your spirituality. Is it not that you are able to be happy and get what you want through the belief that God is there to provide for you? And if you accept what God has to give you, accept all the things that He is giving to you, you will have abundance. Not that I am preaching and telling you about abundance, you know all about that, but it is an example to the world of who you are. It will be part of your joy. It will not be unhappy abundance, but it will be full and rich because of how it was acquired. Not because you tramped on people to get where you are. Not because you pushed aside those or, or cheated or got your money foolishly or in a, a negative way, but because God has provided it. And therefore, it is a joyful gain. A joyful gain. So therefore, we speak to you about the future and how you will become abundant because you are examples of the ascension. Is there any questions? When you talk in terms of shielding ourselves, um, can you, can you give us a few examples on how to do that? Shielding yourself, you mean protection? Yes. Protecting yourself is easy. All you have to do is ask for it. And, you, you, and sometimes you don't even have to, have to ask for it daily, but asking for it daily when you wake up in the morning or when you feel some negativity, ask for protection from your spirit guides, from God. Protect yourself with... Uh, the light as you know it, 
the ascension itself is a protection in some ways if you call on it and intend it to be that way you protect each other because you are connected if you feel like someone is in a a place of harm you can start praying and bring them out of that unless it's something within there that has to happen and they have to learn a lesson but that's not happening as much right now because of the change of energy lessons are not being taught at this second because they are preparing you for the change of energy they are preparing you for the change of thought process the brighter fourth dimensional energy enlightenment and a new age of different energy completely so uh, not not that you will feel it right away you will have to grow into it it will have to assimilate but that is what this is coming and it is a powerful day today does that answer your question yes thank you um, and the other question was in terms of our family members that are uh, more religious I know you you spoke of letting them believe what they believe um, but how does this affect them and and is there <laughs> yes it will affect them this is what they will see they will see that there are people feeling a greater spirit that they are not feeling their energy to the spirit is small and and sometimes disconnected because of the way that that particular religion or belief is made to, to made to be used by humanity and that is limiting it's very limiting and they'll see that they are only using a small percent of the spirit even though in that very small percent there can be miracles there can be great spiritual joy but once they grasp that there is something much greater their eyes will be opened you see but some will not because I mentioned earlier intellectually they cannot grasp anything more than what they have they cannot grasp anything larger and that is fine any connection to spirit that can be brightened is a beautiful and wonderful thing do you understand that yes so therefore do not worry about it it is not that they are totally disconnected from God but you must be the example of a greater perception of him okay all right thank you uh, Noha has a question Hello, dear one. This is Noha. No. Uh, yes. My question is regarding the dove or the bird you mentioned. Um, lately, I've been seeing uh, feathers about about me some areas when I enter the bathroom or something. I still see feathers. So, is this an evidence? This is also an evidence. Anything that draws your attention to the animal kingdom at this time is a reminder that the energies are changing and also a symbol that they know what is happening and that they know that you know so uh, I'll be acquiring a, a physical bird around me all the time that means that means uh, that they are just getting your attention and letting you know that they are know. there for you that mm -hmm. there is something happening and they are connected to you because you are connected to nature in every way true exactly love that that's it that's what I got today thank you you're welcome Makiko Makiko yes hi hi hello hello uh, would you mind telling us an effective meditation for today for example, intention uh, such as to Mother Gaia or um, the people who yes. haven't awakened, or is that going to be 
elemental or cosmic karma revocation? It'll be all of the above because that is what it has to be. It has to be all things working together. However, today is a day for you to bring in your animal guides. Today is for you to attach to nature because that is where all this energy is coming from right now. Attaching to Mother Gaia Earth, as you call her, and the nature all around you is the best thing to do because that's where you'll find the greatest amount of energy. Also connecting to the moon, the, the eclipse, and all the things that are bringing the energy, the solar system, the galaxy, but it is all of nature. And you bring yourself, because you are of nature as well, do not forget yourselves. Bring in your animal guides, bring in your friends, bring in all that that is Mother Gaia. Leave material things out of it for today. Leave materialistic thought processes leave material things aside today and and concentrate on mother gaia nature the animals the sun the moon the sky the weather it the trees these are all the things that will be most effective you will not see much effect in a chair or a couch or a television but you will see in living things much change in for the better actually if you so intend it to be that way you will just visualize them better you will know what they are better their energies will come to you more easily their energies are balanced and we, that's another thing we must speak about is the balance keep yourself balanced at this time no not too high or too low, but the sacral balance. And why is that? Because you can connect one to another and to everything in the universe with the Om in a sacral balance, with atoning, such as what Sarah does, I am aware of her, in atoning, the sounds of chimes, the sounds that are around you that are connecting you to the earth and to spirituality, the singing bowls. It's all beautiful and connecting. Could you tell us how to purify water? The water that is your belief system. You must believe that you know how to purify water. There is many ways to do it. Some people can just hold their hands over the water and ask for the spirit to purify the water and it will be purified if they believe that it can be. You see, the energies go by your belief systems. Your belief system can be limiting or can be very very powerful but it can be done just with your belief system and asking spirit to do what what it is that needs to be done but you must believe it entirely and not doubt this is how you can do many things in your world you see, you have not conquered your belief system. You've grown up in a, in a society that limits everything you do. They tell you you can't do things, so you believe that you can't. Since the dark ages, things have been, have been negative on your planet in the social realms. Before that, there was a lot more positivity. There was a lot more acceptance. But when people were struck down in the dark ages and put through many negative things then since then negativity has been the norm and it still continues but you can change that in your own life by bringing positivity to your front lines and many of you don't even realize where negativity is the words that you say are very powerful you realize that negative can be transferred 
to someone else by a negative comment and make them feel bad and in other cases devastate them or destroy them their spirits in some way therefore on the other side of the coin is the words of positivity they have great meaning and understanding and they have great power if you intend them to be that way the power of words is awesome on your planet your intentions for them can bring up or tear down those things all around you greetings hello there this is Guru Dan welcome I have a question for member Christine and she uh, sends greetings and blessings and she says I do Reiki crystal grids and on the rescue of Queens that she works with and the Queens are the horses and things yeah uh, she said I would like to think that the energy going through her hands which do heat up would get rid of her arthritis and she wonders can you speak about healers of our of their own ailments not clearing and so I guess she's kind of asking um, do you have any information about this um, this yeah. energy where they feel it's perhaps not working correctly I can see right through to that person and they have wrists it's in the wrists and hands is that correct I believe so yes that's um, that's what it sounds like okay listen carefully in humanity whenever you do healing properly with any kind of healing the energy comes through you energy comes through and out of you you combine your energies and the energies of your patients if you will or those that are being healed you combine all your energies together for the healing of this person however when there are other energies coming down through you healing is taking place in your body wherever it can if it is an intention that you are healing others but that intention is also for yourself because if you love yourself you're healing others with the intent that he all healing is being taken place in that room so you are in that room and they are in that room and so healing is taking place now when s healing does not happen with uh, this kind of movement th of energy through spirit alien or universe or whatever you want to call it in your on your earth it means that there's a past life problem and it appears to me that they were caught stealing in a past life and the hands were severed and when that happens it, you must go back and forgive those people who sever the hands and forgive yourself because you may have been innocent but it was a rough and harsh time that you lived in at that time and therefore when with the forgiveness of that action the forgiveness of that action and going back and forgiving then the healing energy that comes through you will be able to be healing of yourself as well but sometimes there is a past life action that must be taken care of before the pain can be fully released does that make sense to you it does to me if she has any other questions I will uh, I will go up for it um, Sabrina has some more questions excellent hello I am I'm Sabrina um, I'm going to ask a question for Maria yes and she says uh, there was a crow here and she would like to know what was the message from it to her it is the larger the bird the greater the message the crows and the hawks and all the greater eagles and things of this nature are giving greater messages and the crows are not evil even though they are black they are not of an evil sense at this nature they're just telling her that there is good coming and there is peace to be with be witnessed and there are going to be more crows coming and more animals coming 
just to give you the the connection to nature that you need. This is also helping you with grounding. The crow is helping you ground because you need some grounding at this time. There is something happening in your life that is causing scattered thoughts and they are going to help you ground at this time. That is what the animal, your animal beings, that your animal nature will help you to ground and balance because that is part of what they are there to do. Okay, thank you. So I guess I'll take, because um, I've been seeing also, I'm not sure what they are. They look like eagles or something like that. Um, it is fine. They are just there to let you know that they are with you. Nature is with you. They are growing with you. They are sensitized and they are energized with you. Okay. But many people will be seeing the animals around them and paying more attention because the animals are growing closer to humanity. They are feeling, some animals are feeling less likely to be with humans and others are feeling more likely to be with humans. You will see what I mean. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would like to ask if anyone in the room with Jim ha have any questions. Hi, I would like to uh, just give thanks, Sabrina. This is Chris. Uh, okay. I just want to give thanks to, uh, you know, uh, bringing this message and, uh, you know, uh, I mean, everything he's saying is, is really speaking to me. So uh, I would just like to give thanks and appreciation. Thank you. There is someone in the room here that has messages or questions. Okay. Oh. Um, how long is the process going to going to take when it's going to start with uh, energy? When is, it's already started, how long is it going to last? It is going to last a great while, actually. The energy is not complete on your world. It is not all come yet. It will come with the full moon, the eclipse, and the blood moon, but it will continue on after that. It cannot come at one, all at once because it would be too devastating, too much energy at once. But this is the great beginning. This will it be the time when you feel it the most. When you feel it the greatest, and it will slowly get better and better. And also, keep yourself as positive as possible so that you can gain from this the things that you need to gain right up front. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Um, we <clears throat> are we going to be using like telepathy to um, help us with the negative and the positive within people? You're going to be have a heightened intuition. That is not to say that telepathy isn't part of it, but your intuition and your um, sensitivity to things will be heightened because your fourth dimensional energy is also being affected but you already have that in some ways but now you will have it even stronger and you will feel the effects of it even greater does that answer your question yes. it is not necessarily telepathy but it is your intuition that will be heightened and your resonation with the fourth dimension. Yes. Can you speak a little bit more about how science is and magic are related? What are the connections, the relationships? Yes. Science and magic are of the same, but there are some sciences that seem like magic. That is quantum understandings and things that move from one place to another without seemingly any effort and that you cannot see them move from one place to another. It is still science, but it 
is of a special energy, and that is what I speak of. The energies that will f affect these kinds of movements, the energies that will affect this kind of distinction between solid science and the sciences that are not understood quite yet. Therefore, it will seem like magic, but people will be discovering scientists, phil physicists, even other kinds of great leaders. I am not sure of all the names of these different scientists. So I will just say that they will be discovering some energies that flow between these cells or these particular atoms or these particular quantum uh, anomalies. We'll call them that. But it will be able to make your life, you, once you realize that they are there, once you realize that it is possible to have these kinds of things in nature that are not abnormal, is it not possible for you to use them when your belief system takes hold of their, con their understanding? Does that make sense to you? No, not yet. I see. <laughs> Once you understand how they work, you can also use them and they will seem like magic, but they are actually still science. Does that make it better? But I cannot teach a class on how they work at this point. We will be working for several days, probably, because it take, took scientists thousands of years to bring these elements to light, I cannot explain them in a few seconds. Only to tell you that they exist and they will come more into your light, into your understanding and into your awareness. And that is the part that is important. Your awareness of their existence changes your belief system in some way. Does that make more sense? Yes. Okay. Because your belief system in magic or in these things that seem like magic affects how well you can do it, the magic. That is the best I can explain it at this time. I have a question. I was wondering if you could give us um, information about your race and maybe get your name. Uh, do you have a name? Yes. And can you share that with us? And I am sorry, I did not. Yes. Yes. And uh, just something about your race and where you're located and how, how advanced are you? We are really not from this galaxy. Okay. So this, to name a star system would be irrelevant because we would be far beyond that star system and into a different one. Um, but we are the Blue Avians. We speak through some people, as you are aware. Some of you are aware, not all of you, perhaps. But we do have much information. My name is Kashasan. It's actually longer than that. It's Kashasan Sisasamanana. But um, just call me Kashasan. Or just Kosh. It does not matter. Names are not important because you really don't know us yet. When we get to know you one-on-one, -on -one, a name will be important. When I'm speaking to a crowd or many people, my name is not important. What is important is the things that you hear and grasp onto. That is the important part. What other part to that question was there? Um, just a little bit more about like, are you a physical being? Um, do you? We. I saw an image that Corey Good had had on his uh, with Ratata. Mm -hmm. And is that the image of what you look like? Yes. <laughs> and we have shown ourselves in your past history on some of the walls of caves. In your on your pyramids, you see the beaked figures. We take on a human form, except for the head. Um, we try to disguise it as much as possible. But our race is a, is a very ancient 
We are very ancient and we've been to your earth many, many times. And we've helped develop your sciences as well. We've helped build things for you and bring about positive growth. Now, you being who you are in your dimension, always find a way to mess it up a little bit. However, that is to be expected. But we have been around for tens of thousands of years. And we are still in corporeal form. I, let me say this about that. Our density is not the same as yours. However, you have so many different names for the density that we are from. To mention the density would only be confusing to you. So therefore, I would just say it is a much higher density. Are the new are and is there somebody else in the room that has a question? I have a question, Jim. I've been seeing uh, dragonflies a lot. Is there any, any meaning to dragonflies? Of course. Anything from nature that comes around that is flying, especially flying beings, insects, birds, they have messages for you. It's become aware. But dragonflies are interesting because they have a rainbow of colors. They are brightening your chakras. They are letting you know that your chakras are in tune with what they are feeling about you. And they have, uh, dragonflies are a very unique species and are actually very loving creatures. And so they, a sensitivity with dragonflies is a beautiful thing. They're chakra brighteners, they're chakra seers, and they know people by their warmth and love. And so if you have a dragonfly that comes near you, or a hummingbird, they are also very intuitive of good love and kindness. You're welcome. Anybody else in the room with Jim have a question? Yes. Back to the physical ailment. I lost the answer to my question. Back to the, the physical ailment piece. Um, I've I've learned that part of our physical ailments are part of the ascension and clearing the universe's karma. Partially, yes. That is true. Yes. Okay, that was my question. Okay. Thank you. What? Thank you. Let me explain that to them. Um. The karma of the universe, if you want to call it that. You see, I see karma very differently than you do. I see your aura and your karma are very similar. You cannot have, you cannot have a good aura and a bad karma. You cannot have a bad karma and a good aura. Do you understand that? They are one and the same. So your aura is your karma. It tells what, your, what is about you. If you've done something that is very bad, your aura will reflect that. Your, car it, your karma is just another word for the energy that is in the karma, or in the aura. So I do not use the word karma because it is not necessary for me. However, what is she, ta what is she, she is talking about is that as we are rising and our, as we give our, off our pain, and recycle it to Mother Earth, as we as individuals in our planets do that, we all, all of us in all of our planets do this when we come to an ascension period, a next evolution time, it does help to purify the universe. Why? Because everyone is attached. Everything is attached. All beings are attached. And that does that answer your question? Yes. A question? So if you were during the Egyptian times, you spent time in Egypt. So is Toph was one of you. Toph, I think his name was. Toph was one of us. That was a, a, an avian then. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? 
I do now. I knew he was, uh, well, part of the Enki. He was the son of Enki. Yes. Okay, and so he was science and math and technology and spread that, so I didn't realize. We that. had to limit ourselves a little with the human culture because they were not ready for a great advancement, but they were ready for some. I understand. And so why the bird image? Because you really don't have a body, I understand. It's what you decided on. We decided on it, yes. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to have a body, but we decided that it was the best way to do work for the universe. And so in the, in the thought of a, some, a bird, yes. the bird image. Interesting. Thank you. And yes. what other areas, so now that we understand that, where else have you inserted yourself through history? All over. We've been to every continent, even Antarctica. And we've witnessed many of your different weather changes, ice ages, global warmings, volcanic periods, the dinosaur age, many things. So we know very much about you. The thing is now, this age must continue. There have been many flips of your planet and changes and different cultures arising and falling. But this culture must continue, at least for a while yet. So we are helping to preserve it. We are wildlife preservationists. But you are not really wildlife. I am just using that as an example. Are you making yourself more known now with the shift because of that? And certainly Corey Good has brought you very much into the public eye. And the shift yourself. is most important. It will either create you or destroy you. We feel that it will create you. Why? Because right now, your ascension period has been successful for the last almost three of your years. It has caught fire. It has brought momentum. And so we see that as a great positivity. Now, there are those within the ascension that need some... Mm, calibration shall we say but there are many of you that are going in a very good and positive direction and the flame burns and therefore we feel this is a good time oh, okay. for you mm -hmm. and that it it could this energy we are putting a very positive spin on it because that is what needs to happen with it if there is a negative spin on it it could be devastating to your planet. If there is a positive reaction to it, then we feel that you will remain in a good frame for quite a while. Because the Aquarian Age, which will be starting as of tomorrow on your time, will last a good deal of time, as you know. The energies of the Aquarian Age will last far beyond the Aquarian Age. So, thank you. You're welcome. Does that answer your question? Oh, I have lots, but that was wonderful. <laughs> Dan. Greetings, Kasha-san. This is Guru Dan. Guru Yata. Continue. Thank you. Our group, Human Colonies, Hukalo, is I such a fantastic, diverse, energetic group many growing individuals, many different energies are sensed by so many different people. We have so yes. much going on. Yes. Do you have any, any wisdom that you can impart on us that will help us with our journeys? Because sometimes we don't quite know how to take the energies or we become uncertain sometimes. Is there uh, some wisdom you can give us to help us uh, travel through these energies a little better. Of course. Right now I see you as moving in a very positive way. However, it is difficult to assimilate energies that you're not sure of. Many people think that they are feeling something different and uh, perhaps even supernatural when they feel these energies. And that is fine. Bring them into yourself. Be cautious, of course that you're not bringing in anything neg negative. But at this point, many of you are understanding that the energies that you are feeling are appropriate. Now, there are some that are in very bad shape right now, even though they are in the ascension. 
they have many maladies, problems, third dimensional conflicts, etc. So therefore, they have to try to balance themselves, even with these problems, to make sure that the energies can come to them in a, in a positive way. Because if they are too down, they cannot really receive the energy in a way that will be beneficial. So what I would like you to do is do a prayer for all the people in Human Colony and all those that are ascending so that you can link one to another and pull those up that are feeling low. Pull those ones up because you're all attached. Even though the attachment might be weaker in some places, with people that are feeling very low, it is still an attachment to their God portion, still an attachment to the light that is within them. And it is still important to bring their light along because it will not always be low. It will not always be pulling down. But your energy is strong and balanced and grounded and you are able to pull them up easily if you only give it your effort. A small effort is only what you need because the light is incredibly strong. The light is incredibly strong and can pull people out very easily. They just have to want to be pulled out, for one thing. Their intention to move with the light is another thing. You see, it's, we all have free will. We do. You do. It is called free will almost all over the universe in some way or another. Free action, free will, free thought, free decision, whatever you want to call it. Wonderful. I'm, I'm wondering, um, just for myself, uh, do you have uh, any information uh, specifically for me that uh, you'd like to pass? One moment. Let me attach to your light. <laughs> concerns about one that walks on light, concerns about, ah, but not concerns so much. You are moving in a very good direction. You see light at the end of, the, of a tunnel of some sort. You feel that you are being pulled into a leadership position, and it is just something that spirit is doing and you're allowing him to do does that relate to you yes that's pretty much what's going on right now yes so therefore that is what I see but there are other small concerns but they are not even worth speaking of all right your, your prosperity will be affected by the future in a wonderful good way. wonderful thank you thank you so much uh, Valerie uh, our member Valerie is up next First, I'd like to thank you so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Valerie. You're welcome. Now, I've been experiencing some ringing in the ears. I would like to know what or who is causing that. There are many people that are experiencing ringing in the ears because there is a, there is a space vehicle that puts off a vibration that causes ringing in the ears. So therefore, you must be in their area. What part of the world are you in? I am in the western part of the United States. Yes. Is it sort of mid-lower? Actually, upper. It's Montana. in the upper? It's in the upper? Yes. Okay. Toward the Mount Shasta area? Mm, a ways up above that, yeah. Okay. Very good. Kurita. There are ships there that will cause that as well. They're on the, the western coast. I thought that they were lower in, on the, in the western coast, but they're all along the western coast as high as Alaska. Um, yes, these beings are checking the seismic readings in that area because uh, Grukfiknir the alliance that is around your United States needs some help with seismic in that area. There seems to be some major problems 
what's going on with tectonic plates and they are trying to keep them in good balance because you are well overdue for a at least 7.5 earthquake. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming today. Your, and, your uh, ringing should stop. I will ask them to put out a different frequency when they are, are lower because that comes when they are in the lower parts of the upper atmosphere, if that makes sense to you. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And um, I would like to know if you have any personal messages for me today. Hmm. Let me connect to you for a moment. It's hard to do it when there's so many energies flowing at once. However, I think I can reach you. There is, the first thing I see is there's some conflicts that need to be resolved. Do you relate to that? Yes, thank you. And that they will be resolved because you are going to be the example. You are not going to say too much of anything right at the, this time, but things will, will work out because there is a great connection to understanding what is happening. You understand exactly what is happening on these in these conflicts, but the other parties or other the other parts of it are not so understanding and feel that they are being rejected or not being looked at as equals in some way. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So therefore you will be the equalizer. You will try to bring equality there. Now it is free will for them to decide what to do, but in my impression of you, you are moving up in the ascension quite quickly. You have just taken a large leap within the last few months. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Thank you. So therefore, yes, I'm feeling that they are going to see this and I'm hoping that they will relate to it. Okay, I have always had birds around me. Can I have a Absolutely. special connection to them? The next thing I was going to mention is that the birds are very, very loving of you. They love you very much. They are bringing you much of the energy that you are... You sometimes can get depressed about things, but they bring you a loving peace and joy that you can connect with more than pretty much anything else. Yes, they thank are, you so much. They are really directly con connected with you. You feel that? Yes. Yes, I have always felt that. And take your energy from these birds. They are giving it to you. They are bringing nature to you and saying, we love you. Do not be depressed. We are here for you. We are part of what you can look forward to as your joy because they will sing to you and make you happy. Yes, thank you so much. I'll pass the mic now. Um, You're welcome. Uh, Zenaida, you can go next. A greetings to you. Greetings, Zenaida. How are you? I am absolutely wonderful. Great. My question is, um, I'm having a lot of voices. Yes. Mom, and it's very high energies. And yes. last week, uh, the voice said that um, I got granted like honor it with the holy fire. Yes. I would like to know from whom I'm getting these messages um, and why I was granted with that. You got the message from actually other humans. The message came to you because there are certain humans like Will and Brian that are sending it out to those that will receive it. However, yours came in a much different way. Let me explain. You were ready for it. The voices that you are hearing in your head are those that want to channel through you. 
those that are ready for you to open up, those that are ready for you to shed a lot of the things that are still being held on to, pains um, and different things. You're starting to shed these maladies. You're starting to shed the pain little by little. You're starting to shed them. But you're not aware of it yet because it's too subtle. But as you are doing this, these voices will come and you will be able to channel. You are already a great channel, but these are higher entities. These are ones with knowledge that you have no idea how high their knowledge is. And so you feel a bit uncomfortable because you're not aware of how to express who they are. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Thank you. Because what you will be able to express who they are and connect to a, a great audience of thought. So just relax into this new energy. Be of stability and balance because there are moments when you get out of that balance. I see that. But balance and ground yourself now and pull it all into you because you are a great conductor of it. Conduct it. Bring it in. And then later you'll be the transmitter of it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, you have spoken about the uh, earth changes. I was wondering how that affects the ascension and, um, you know, will our everyday life become challenging? No. The energy will come slow. You will be able to integrate it. It should make your life better if you're in a positive thought process. The earth will become, will stay the same, but there will be some change. I shouldn't say that. The earth will do some changes, but it will seem the same to you. The changes will be slow, but, but you will start to see new species of insects. You will start to see new species in parts of the world where they n never existed before. You will start to see trees that have changed and hybridized and grafted one to another because the tree system is all connected in some way or another, at least on each continent. Do you understand that? And under the ocean, the trees are connected to plant life and things of that nature. All plant life are connected in one way or another. That only makes sense, does it not? Otherwise, how did they get to be where they are? It wasn't just the wind blew a seed. What about a buckeye? A buckeye can't be thrown across the ocean. So you're going to start seeing many different things happening. But they will be gradual. Don't expect to see... Uh, a squirrel rabbit Im immediately so okay and how does the new energies affect our DNA well that is up to you of course if you bring in it, it into yourself as a positive thing it will awaken the positive parts of the DNA if you bring it into a negative form. There are negative areas in the DNA that can be activated to work in a, mal a malevolent way. And it's unusual, but you do have that balance within you. And some things that are positive can be turned negative. Just like if you leave an apple out too long, it will turn rotten. If you do not refrigerate it right away, of course, everything must die eventually. But as I'm just using it as an example, do not let it turn rotten too quickly. Okay, and I just wanted to ask a question on the personal level. Um, I used to be able to see beings and entities, but at some point, due to fear, I closed myself off. Yes. Um, you use fear as a block and not as a caution and a guide. You have to stop blocking the future because you never know 
it may not seem like a good place to go at the time, but once you get there, it could be absolutely beautiful and very rewarding. It's like the desert. Many people say, oh, it's so hot and dry and there's nothing really there. But those of you that know what life is, there's beautiful cactuses, there's animals, there, there are beautiful things on the desert actually. But it's not going to kill you to be there. So I'm, I am not relating to your language as well as I would like to. I oh, know you're doing wonderful. Um, yeah, because I'm. Tr I was. I want to allow myself to see again. See um, again. You take away the fear and the blockages by saying, "Thank you, God, for taking away the fear and the blockages." You have to thank them for doing this for you because you did it to yourself. So, and now sometimes you don't know how to undo it. So ask for help, thank them for the help, and then when it is unblocked, just use fear and doubt as a guide. You have heard this before. I've heard it said in many of your sessions. Yes, yes I do listen. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I, do you have time for more questions? There are several more questions. But I, I do not know how much time you have. I am not aware of time in your dimension. Okay. Uh, Neil? Hello, this is Neil. Hello. Hello, how are you? I am very well. Uh, first question, do you give DNA infusions out? We have not at this point. I am not even sure if we can dimensionally give you a, a DNA infusion. That would have to be looked into. Okay, and the second question is, there's a hybrid child called Arabella. Yeah. Uh, do you know of this child? Yes. Yes, because I feel that uh, this child has connections to the avians. Could you expand on that, please? Arabella does have connections to the avian culture. She is a, um, we adopted her, so to speak. She does speak for us. She does feel us. She understands us. She actually has some of our DNA with her, but it is, we do not know how that that has come about except from spirit. So therefore, we have adopted her into our thought processes. What else would you like to know? How she is connected to you? Yeah, yeah I know how she's connected to me because she's my twin flames hybrid child. Um, yes. I've been getting information on her that you take a fly in, is that correct? She goes on your back sometimes, is that correct? We have taken her. I do not see it quite that way. Perhaps she would describe it that way because of a lack of understanding of how to use your language, but we have flown her around in our ships, yes. Okay, that's interesting. So one thing I would like to know is where is she actually living about? Oh, where is she living? On a planet called Took. Oh, she's on the planet. That is yeah. interesting. She does fly around in ships. She does go from ship to ship occasionally. She is exciting. She is full of energy, full of love, and full of ideas. And so she is very welcome in most places, yes. Okay, so what I understand is she's quite a unique hybrid child. There's not many hybrid childs with the DNA that she has. So yes, there's not any, actually, that I know yes. of. Yeah, that's what I got also. Like, so what I'm interested in is what, is, what are her specific qualities that she has actually her qualities are quite exceptional and it's it's already been affected so if if she continues to grow in the way that she will uh, grow she will be multi-dimensional she will also be multifaceted in talents and she'll be able to speak probably 30 or 40 different languages 
Okay, and last question, does she have any of my DNA within her? Yes, she does. Okay, that is perfect. Thank you very much for your answering twin the question. Flame, your twin flame has asked for that, for that that if it was possible, I guess, that your your DNA would be in there. I'm starting to see the connection now. This was asked for and granted by a higher dimension. But uh, yes, you were involved in it in about perhaps 5 to 7%. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. I'll pass the mic over. Much love to you and much appreciation. You are welcome, Neil. Um, I, I just need to make a pause here. Um, we were trying to make space for Will to come in. Um, ah, I am aware of him, yes. Yes. They told me that he might come. Yes, um, so we had made a space. Um, I will leave now then. It is appropriate that I go. Um, if you wish, I was just trying to make sure that he can get in uh, at the moment. So, so I will leave now, and much blessings to you. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being with us. Um, if you would like to say a blessing before you go, we would appreciate that. One moment. Understand the words as to be like this. Light capillaries burst forth, forming the deposit places for the soul. When they come to a specific light, when they come to a specific entrance of light, therefore, we open these small places, large places, in attempt to capture all that there is in the universe, all that there is in space-time. You are part of all that is, and therefore we are part of you, and we capture you not to, as a prison, but as a light which spreads out vastly and eternally and moves to all the places that love can be felt, that love can be eternalized. So therefore, be in this spot, this moment, this creativity now. This is the place for you, for you are part of all there is. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Aoi.